I actually see. See, this is how the 90 essential nutrients came to be. This is why it's not 89. This is why it's not 91. It's a 90 essential nutrients. It's because when he started looking at all of these links, he started looking at fundamentally, you really need consistently these 90 essential nutrients. Now here's the thing. This might have been 40 years ago, but the reason why I say that Dr. Wallach and what we're doing is at the core is that now this is well known. This is now, there's a, uh, um, if you go to the physician desk reference, right, they list out, their list is 60. So they have 60 essential nutrients. They're called essential nutrients, non-essential nutrients, essential nutrients. These are the essential nutrients that they have defined that your body needs on a consistent basis or you will face this disease or this illness. It's already listed out there. So the World Health Organization goes out to all of these different countries and it says, listen, if your populations have these 60 essential nutrients, if any of these are missing, this is the health problem that this patient is going to have. The reason why I say that is because I don't want you to believe that it's now just Dr. Wallach. That it was just, well, it was just him maybe 40 years ago and you would just have to believe him. Now, you don't need to believe him. You can believe, if you want to believe the American Medical Association, great, believe the American Medical Association. You want to believe the World Health Organization, great, believe the World Health Organization. You want to believe Dr. Wallach, you can believe Dr. Wallach. You want to believe well, the Naturopathic Association, believe the Nat Now, all of these groups, they're saying the very same thing as what Dr. Wallach had began 40 years ago, okay? Now, there's the, the difference of the 30 nutrients. Where do those 30 nutrients come from? The only difference between what the World Health Organization, the American Medical Association, all these groups are saying, and what Dr. Wallach is saying, is that they like to see individual nutrients, okay? Dr. Wallach likes to use one set of nutrients that are in, in their most natural matrix. And that nutrient is minerals. See, here's the thing. Your body has a really amazing way to make pretty much everything that it needs to live. Okay? It can make, um, it can make vitamins from other vitamins. It can make certain essential fatty acids from certain things. It can make hormones from certain vitamins, certain minerals. It can make, but the one thing that it cannot produce on its own is minerals. The weird thing is, is that your body needs minerals to live. But it's weird that whoever made the body, and everyone has their own thing, that's cool, okay, right? <laughs> is, that, is that it didn't provide it uh, the, 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 a major, major thing that it needs to live. But what it did is it allowed another living organism to make that, and that is plants. Plants are the only living organism or element that you can get minerals from, that your body can actually use. Now those minerals are found in the soil, and the only thing that can take it from the soil and put it into a usable form is a plant. Because we don't do this little process called photosynthesis. If we did, then we would be able to take an inorganic mineral and turn it into an organic mineral. But a plant is the only thing that allows us to get that because we need to eat the plant. So somebody had their plan in mind that said, listen, I'm gonna force you to eat a bunch of plants. Because if you don't, you will die, right? And now you could tie that back into the fact that, oh no, the one place that I was supposed to get all of these minerals doesn't even have as much that I'm supposed to get. And then I won't even talk about most people's lifestyles and the fact that they don't eat enough of these plants, right? And so this is how everything all came to be. 
And this is why our core philosophy is very simple. Every company has their philosophy of what provides health and wellness. What we believe is that the reason why you are in the health issue that you are in is because of a disease called the deficiency disease. That you are deficient in a certain nutrient. And that certain nutrient is either a vitamin, a mineral, an essential fatty acid, or an amino acid or a combination of those things. It's very, very simple. Because these nutrients are the ones that are found in food. And so that's why I love what Longevity has always messaged, what Dr. Wallach has always been about. I don't, to me, you know, I've been in this industry for, you know, 16 years. I've been formulating for 15 years. Like, I know this, know this. Listen, back in the day, I could care less whether it was 90, 89, 100, like it didn't matter to me. Wallach, I didn't care, he was just another guy, okay, right? Because there's plenty of those guys. There's the Marcola guy, there's the Sinatra guy, there's, there was all these people that I believed in, that I researched in, that I did, right? The reason why I always believed in young Jeffy's philosophy is because you had to be an idiot not to believe in it. <laughs> because it was very simple, all they were telling you was, Take your vitamins, your minerals, amino acids, and essential fatty acids. Just take more of those nutrients that are inherently found in food. It wasn't take the polyglycols, it wasn't to take an acai berry, it wasn't to take the sea buckthorn, it wasn't there to, to, to well, no, it wasn't there to take a, a food or something that was growing next to the Himalayans that people lived to be a bazillion years old. It was just, listen, take your vitamin. Take, take those nutrients that were found in food, but unfortunately, because of the way that we grow and we process and we cook food, you don't get enough of them. And maybe your lifestyle and your, yeah, your lifestyle doesn't allow you to get enough of it. So why don't you try this, okay? And so that is the origin of 90 for life. That's the 90 essential nutrients. That's why it's a, oh, one real thing, the, like I was saying, I totally forgot, is that the 30, right? is because remember, Dr. Wallach, and we all believe the best way to take your nutrition is in its most natural form, okay? And with minerals, minerals you can extract and either pull apart, like the calcium, magnesium, the boron, or you could just take it as it is. And when you take it as it is, you essentially get those other 30 minerals. Because when you pull it from that plant, you're all, you're gonna get that natural matrix. Do you see what I'm saying, right? And so, and so that, that's the only difference between those two sets, okay, right? So, so and I'll, I got a whole presentation that talks more about that, but now I wanna switch over to the transformation experience, okay, right? So here's the thing, I, um, I have been researching um, uh, weight management um, and specifically childhood obesity for, um, for seven years now, right? I'm, I've done six childhood obesity studies. Um, I do a lot of work on obesity because it's linked to a major other element of research that I do, which is diabetes, right? And so here's what I've realized um, is that is that unfortunately, marketing has taken weight loss in a whole different direction from where it should have been, okay? And where it all started, where it all started was in 1972, there was a researcher by the name of Jean Mayer, and if you go to Tufts University, there's a Jean Mayer, um, um, a nutritional uh, thing there, um, your partner there. And she did, um, they did a, a, a research on calories. And they found that, you know, um, these rats that were taking in more calories than were they taking out, okay, right, expending, that they gained weight. And those that were on lower calorie diets were, had lost weight, okay, right? And there was a ton of other elements that actually caused these rats to gain weight. The types of foods that they were, they were eating, when they were eating them, the age of these rats, but that was never reported. 
And the reason why it was never reported is because, and, she, and it's not their fault that this happened, because as soon as this research came out, it was a great way for the food industry to embrace it and to make it logical, because it was so logical. I mean, think about it, right? If you put more air in the balloon, the balloon gets bigger. <laughs> if you take air out of the balloon, the balloon gets smaller. Wow, we could build an entire industry off of this. And that's how that all started. But there has been little to no significant research that has shown that the more calories that you put in than what you take out will cause you to gain weight. And the less calories that you put in than what you take out will allow you to lose weight. And you can go do the research, okay? And the reason why that is, is because it isn't just about the calories. It's a lot about where those calories actually come from. And then there was another big piece of research, it's called the Seven, seven, um, seven Countries Study. And the Seven Country Study probably did one of the most destructive things for our <coughs> kind of society that we are now seeing the results of, which is a 22% increase in neurological diseases. I mean, you've got um, almost a 17% increase in Alzheimer's with younger individuals. You have more incidence of heart disease when it should be declining. And the reason why that is, is because we have vilified fats. And we vilified all fats. And so this study basically started that whole trend in which they did this study, they found that countries that had low fat diets had less incidences of heart disease, and those with low, with low fat diets had less incidences of heart disease, those with okay, right? But again, it was a causality type of link. That it doesn't necessarily mean that that was truly the case because there was a ton of other factors. And now you have you know, Time Magazine putting butter on the front cover saying, we need to eat more butter. And then, oh my gosh, and now the American Medical Association and the American Heart Association saying, oh guys, hey, hold on, sorry, hey, you actually do need to eat fats. And fats are actually really good for your heart. And if you don't, you're going to face actually lower HDL levels and higher of the bad LDL levels, right? So you've got these two things kind of working in a way. I just wanted to kind of take that. I want you to just kind of you know, put that on the uh, shelf there, okay, right? Here is the whole thing about the transformation experience in weight loss. I believe that weight loss, and specifically fat loss, because I don't care about your weight, I care about your fat. Unfortunately, we have also created a society in which everyone is reporting their incredible weight loss. That they drink cabbage soup for seven days and they lose 30 pounds. <laughs> or that they drink, eat grapefruit, or they do the Atkins diet, and do all these sort of things, and they report all of this amazing weight loss that they have. But then when you start really digging in on the research, because nobody actually does this digging in on the research, you start realizing that the weight that they're losing is the absolute wrong weight. It is the muscle weight. It is the water weight. It is the bone density weight. It's the fat weight. I mean, think about it. Your body has this really neat thing that it wants to do, which is to live. <laughs> and it will do whatever it needs to to live. One of the greatest energy sources that it has to live is fat. So the last thing that it is going to give up is this incredible energy source called fat when you put it into an environment where it's stressed. And so all of these diets and programs that are not the typical eat well, eat with variety, eat amply, what are you doing? You're putting more stress on the system. It's all of this exercise that everybody so needs to do 
and all this intense exercise and this grueling, and this, what is that? <laughs> it's stress. You think you're doing something great for yourself because you think no pain, no gain. The problem with all that exercise is that it's most of the time, it's causing you to retain weight rather than to lose weight. And so, so what happens is, is you've got this whole thing where people are focused on weight and all I want to do is I, meaning young Jeffy, is we just want you to get healthy. Because at the very end of the day, we know that when you get super, super healthy, your migraine goes away. Your hot flashes goes away. Your, your arthritis goes away. Your eyes get better. Your nails feel good, or whatever. Your skin feels good. You're not, and you lose weight. See, this is the difference between longevity and other companies, is that what we're trying to do is first you capture your health, and everything else will fall in place. I know your immediate concerns are getting into those jeans. I get that, right? But here's the thing. I can get you into those jeans, that's a piece of cake. The problem is, is you staying in those jeans, <laughs> right? And then the problem with that is that as you begin to yo-yo, that's just more stress on the system, which then what? Causes these illnesses and diseases. And so what our entire program is all about is number one, is to provide you the greatest amount of help possible. And then secondly, while we're doing that, create a program that focuses and emphasizing the release of fat and also the inhibition of gaining more fat, okay? There's three elements to this program. The first program, the first element is food addiction. The second element is insulin, trap, if you will. And the third is inflammation. These are the three reasons why you are not at the weight that you need to be at. These are the three reasons why your composition isn't meaning between fat and muscle is where it needs to be at, okay? Here's the thing is that, and I realized this with, we were, Jerry and I, we were just talking about my mom, you know, right? And my mom and I, we are, we have been in this journey for a long time. She's 68, she's diabetic, she's overweight. Like, let me tell you something. I mean, me and we go at it, all right? And, and I mean, what, what uh, uh, um, there was, like I said, you know, my first thing with her, my dad went to India for three months. I brought her to Greenville, South Carolina, where I lived at the time. And in three months, you know, I took uh, you know, someone who was quite overweight and all that. She was off of her uh, uh, insulin. She was off of, she was showing she has insulin, blood pressure. She was off of both of those things. She had lost uh, 32 pounds. She was mobile. I mean, she was feeling fantastic. She, they wrote her up on diabetes management, you know, that little magazine that they had and all that sort of stuff, right? And sure as shot, you know, sure as heck, you know? <laughs> A year goes by and she's back to where she is before. So then we go at it again, right? And she comes over the holidays and we, and we go through this over and over again. And you know what? Now I'm done. I'm done. It's tiring. I'm done. It's tiring. And I also realized, unfortunately, she's, it's, she's so far past what I can do because now it's in her. Meaning that it's in her head. And this is when I began to start really researching what neurologically what's happened. Looking at what, what create, not what just creates habits, what creates these consistent actions that individuals are unable to break. And guys, it is tough. It is, you know this. You know how tough it is. And you know what? Unfortunately, our society has made it where it's your fault. It's your problem. You're not strong enough. You don't care for all of those things that I was saying to her, right? Why don't you care about Annika and Dylan, my niece and nephew? 
Why are you not? You're strong enough to do this. You know, you're, 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 you got me as a real, you know, all of those things. Blaming you, blaming you, blaming you. But see, at the very end of the day, if you really look about it, the, 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 think about it, and listen, I am, I'm Indian, okay, right? And so, us Indian, everything is your fault. <laughs> there is no other person that has created anything, is it? And if you're gonna go on a cruise, I'm bringing my dad, you will know exactly where this all starts, okay, right? And so, <clears throat> the whole way, so, so I'm not one to say that, hey, listen, you know what, it's not your fault, I go, but when you really do the research, when you really think about it, you really see what's happening, not only in the body, but most importantly in the mind, it's, it's, it's all over, guys. I mean, you create that neural pathway and you reinforce it over and over and over and over again. It's hard for you to break from that. I mean, it literally takes up real estate in your head when you create an action. And the more that you do, the more real estate it takes up. When you create a new action, that's a tiny little piece of real estate in that same mind. So think about this. The biggest issue that we all have is sugar. That is the number one problem that we all have, is sugar. And sugar is the same word as carbohydrates. Here's the thing. It began at the very, in our infancy. It began, I mean, mother's milk is sweet, right? Not that I drink it, but the more I drink it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, but the thing, and so right away, right away, we realize that sweet is survival. And nature has set it up that way. If you take a look at all of the sweet things that are in nature, they are nutrient dense, which is good, because we want those calories. That is what's survival for us. If you look at those things in nature that are bitter, they're usually what? Poison. So there is an evolutionary thing that we have created on these paths, okay? But see, here's the thing, is that when we first drank that sweetness, we were also drinking protein. We were also drinking, everything was in the right combinations. And when we were done, what we were supposed to do was eat from nature, which, had again the right composition. When we were kids, my dad would buy sugar cane. Okay, right? I don't know if your dad would buy sugar cane. It's probably a good thing that they did. But like, and so you, I don't know if you've ever seen sugar cane, it's like a bamboo stalk, okay, right? And at home, at nighttime, you chop a little piece off and you like chew on the sugar cane. If, for those of you that have chewed sugar cane, you know what I'm talking about. The first thing, sugar cane, if you compare it to like a Coca-Cola, it's a whole lot less sweet. And the second thing is, it takes some effort to <laughs> chew through a sugar cane. Right? And so, but nature didn't realize that you were gonna take that sugar cane, an entire stock, and squeeze it into a 16 ounce drink <laughs> and that you could drink it in a matter of minutes, right? right? But see, nature knew that it was going to give you all that fiber, so it was going to slow the absorption of that sugar. When your body had that slow absorption, it had the ability to either do two things with it, either to store it if it didn't need it, or secondly, use it as energy. But it knew that the amount that you were taking in was going to be able to be used as energy. See, that, that's why we talk about how bad processed foods are. Isn't not necessarily because of the nutrients that are in processed foods, but what is the processed foods actually doing to an inherent engine that was built for something that was something else. So see, all of a sudden we get young, we start doing it, and then we start eating these processed foods like cereals and more sweet. And what are we doing? We're reinforcing that trigger. That sweet is really good. And the other thing that it does is that remember, if food is a drug, if you don't think that food is a drug, then you are gonna miss this entire conversation. Anything that does two things, one, has withdrawal symptoms, and two, uh, uh, creates tolerance, is defined as a drug. Well, what does food do? Food does those two exact things. It creates tolerance, meaning that now you have to take in the same, more sweetness to get the same type of pleasure, right? 
And the second thing is when you take it away, what happens? You get the withdrawal symptoms. So now when you start thinking about that, you start realizing how, why now for my mom, I don't, there's nothing that I can really do of such significance because it's been 68 years. And what's drawing her back is the fact that you just need to stimulate that little sugar response a little bit. You just need a little bit of chai to make her want more of it. You know why? Because unfortunately, when you build that pathway and you signal it just a little bit, it doesn't send a little response. It sends the same response as if you drink the entire cup of chai. That's the problem. So now you think for years and years you've been building this response. Now you're at this point in which you actually want to make a change. But the reason why it's hard for you to make that change is every time you make that little trigger, it gives it the same level of trigger as before. But the problem is you didn't give it that same amount. So you know what it does? It keeps wanting more. And so now you overconsume and you overeat. So this is so to me, what it all starts with is addiction. Then what happens is the major element of addiction that is causing physiological problems. You do not get fat, and you do not get thin unless your hormones tell you that you do. And there is only one hormone that plays the predominant, if not only, role in whether you will be overweight, meaning over-consuming calories and storing them, or releasing those, and that is insulin. And you've heard all about it because that is the major thing that they always talk about with diabetes, right? You can't manage your insulin. Your pancreas isn't strong enough. You have weakened your beta cell. You've done all of these things that have caused you to have the inability to do what? What is insulin doing? It is essentially getting sugar out of the bloodstream and putting it into two pathways, an energy pathway or a storage pathway. And the reason why is because the body knows that that sugar is incredibly destructive. So the most vulnerable place that your body has is its circulatory system. The system, the highways in which anything that goes in that highway goes everywhere throughout the body. That's why my mom has neuropathy. That's why she has glaucoma. That's why she has brittle bones. That's why she has thinning hair. That's why all of these things, they're all over. How can one disease be doing everything all over? Because you know where the disease is? It's in her blood. So where does blood go? Everywhere. That's why diabetes is the best disease to get because you can nutritionally manage it and it is the worst disease to get because if you don't manage it, then you will have compounding illnesses, issues every couple months, right? So here's the thing is that you got to control that hormone because you know that that once that hormone gets spiked it tells the body what to go get those sugars and put them in the storage facilities because you're not producing enough energy to be able to actually use all of it but if that insulin level is inhibited yet you're actually doing activity the body says well wait a second i'm doing activity i need energy there's no sugar in the bloodstream, so I gotta go get it from these storage facilities. People always think that fat is in this like secret lock box and you gotta know the right combination. It's not. It's actually free, free flowing. Fat is free flowing all the time. And one of the best times in which fat is utilized is during sleep. Because during sleep, your body is incredibly active, but it's not having any energy that's put in the system. So because it doesn't have any energy and food in the system that's spiking any type of hormone and insulin level, but it's still doing activity, it needs to go get it from what? These free-flowing fatty acids that are floating around the blood. 
So that's a really great time for you to burn this fat. So the major thing that you need to do is you need to inhibit that insulin. If you inhibit that insulin, you are on your way to burning fat and getting to the right weight. And by the way, one of the great things about that is that you produce less inflammation. And that's the third model here. And the third model is, is that if you have inflammation in the system, you are going to cause your body to retain because it's in chaos. It's in a war mode. And the problem with inflammation is it starts breaking down the organs that are needed to get rid of the fat. When you are overweight, even, sorry, even before this, okay? If you have inflammation, and if you have sugar, meaning sugar carbohydrate inflammation, the major organs that it destroys is the liver, the kidneys, and the, uh, the pancreas, okay? And the last thing that it hits is the muscle, your muscles. Here's the problem with that. The problem with that is that you need the liver to be able to shuttle fat out of the system. So fat gets released, it's not ready to go in the system out. It needs to be processed through the liver and then it gets out. But if the liver is not working properly, what happens? The fat gets recycled. The pancreas is the dang hormone that controls the insulin. And so now all of a sudden, your pancreas isn't working right, and so now the insulin's not working right. And then the muscles, is which is your major, major place in which you can burn those calories, if they start deteriorating, you have nowhere to burn this energy. This is why all those people that get on those crash diets say, I don't know why I gained all that weight back. I'm eating the same exact way. I haven't eaten any different. I'm eating the same 500 calories that I was before. I was eating the same foods as I was before, but for some reason, I'm now gaining weight. I lost all that weight, now I gained weight. Doesn't make any sense. Here's the difference. When you were actually losing the weight, you had something called muscle. And now, unfortunately, you lost that weight, which was muscle, and now you kept eating, which was fine, but the problem is, is the major place in which you were actually burning those calories are gone. That's why the leanest people are the ones with the greatest amount of muscle mass. What do I tell people right now? Me, Tommy, everybody, listen, go out there and build as much muscle as you can. Really, whether you're my sister, or whether you're me, or whether you're my dad, or whether you're my mom, the number one thing I tell you, you want to manage your weight, go build muscle. Because that is the only engine that will allow you to be able to burn those calories that are released. So, so, so this entire program called the Transformation Experience and the Nutrition Plan is based on these three philosophies and how to manage these three philosophies. And I know I'm probably out of time here, right? And so, 10 more minutes? Okay, perfect. It's a very simple program. It's a very simple program, okay? There's only three parts to it. The first part is the products, okay? It's not the most important part. It's one of the parts, okay, right? And that is the healthy body pack. I don't care what healthy body pack you choose. You want to choose a weight loss one, choose a weight loss one. You want to choose a blood sugar one, choose a blood sugar one. You want to choose a bone and joint one, you choose a bone. I don't care. And the reason why I don't care is because at the very end of the day, all I'm using the healthy body pack for is to give you the fundamental foundational nutrients that your body needs to be strong. Okay? And the beautiful thing about each and every one of those healthy body packs is they have the core three products. This is why, when I was telling you earlier, real quick, that you can't go wrong, is that whenever you ask somebody, hey, how do I get started at Longevity? Do not look at the 9,900 and whatever products that we have, okay, right? Just choose eight, eight products. It's either the Healthy Start Pack, the Blood Sugar Pack, the Bone and Joint Pack, the Digestive Pack, the Anti-Aging Pack, the Athletic Performance Pack, and 
Yeah. And the brain and heart pattern. That's the only one. Well, I don't know, my gosh, you know, I got <coughs> nerve issues and I got digestive issues. You know what, let's, what one do you want? Digestive, let's choose digestive. <laughs> because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The first 90 days, it doesn't matter. Let's just choose a path in which you can get excited about because the most immediate thing that you're dealing with, that symptom is in there, okay, right? That's why it's easy to get someone started on Young Jeffy. And remember, it is not your job to sell, as David said, it's not your job to be selling anyone, convincing anyone, pitching anyone. It is simply your job to simply tell people about your authentic testimonial, and secondly, make sure that you're available for when they say, I want to give this thing a try, that you show them how to give it a try, right? And so that's why I don't care what body pack you want, but she's okay, right? The second thing is a nutrition program. And the nutrition program is right there, okay, right? And it's simple, it only has three things, okay, right? You're gonna eat a lot of vegetables, you're gonna eat a lot of healthy proteins, and you're gonna eat a lot of healthy fats. Now listen, that program that's on the plan is, is 1,200 calories, right? You wanna eat 5,000 calories, eat 5,000 calories. I don't care, okay, right? <laughs> eat as many calories as you want but don't eat them in different proportions than what I tell you to eat them, okay? So if it's uh, two cups of, I think each proportion is basically two cups of vegetables, six ounces of protein, and like half a cup of uh, healthy fats, okay, right? If you want to eat more because you're hungry or you don't have energy, I don't want you to be hungry. I don't want you to have low energy. Then I just need you to, fine, you wanna double it up, double it up, but don't be doubling up just the protein and leaving the rest the way that it is, you have to double up everything. So it's four cups of vegetables, and it's 12 ounces of protein, and it's one cup of healthy fat. It's you double up everything, okay, right? <clears throat> because the key is in the proportion. The key is in what the plate actually looks like, okay, right? But the major thing is I don't want people to feel like what they feel when they're on a diet, because this is not a diet. This is a nutritional lifestyle. I do this, what I'm telling you to do, to lose weight or to lose fat, I do not all of the time, but I do it most of the time. Like, I'm chowing out on moose over there, and I do that, 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 like, listen, my old thing is, my old quote is, you know, do what you can, when you can, the best you can, okay, right? So when I can be really good, I am great. And when I can't be so good, I'm decent. And sometimes I'm a mess. But it is what it is, okay, right? What about Australia, you hypocrite? Anyway, so, right? So, so, that was a world away. Uh, and so, and then, and then the third thing is just a program. Third thing is just listen, it's 90 days. Give yourself 90 days, okay, right? Fight through it, it sucks. You're gonna feel hungry, you're gonna feel tired, you're gonna feel like cravings, you're gonna have all that sort of stuff. But you gotta fight through it. If you're having problems with whatever you wanna do post 10 days, then you can, Figure, then you can like, like I said, the first week, you're gonna feel hungry because you're not eating this way before. But don't give it just a week and say, okay, Jeeverson, I could double it, so I'm gonna double it. <laughs> give it 10 days and then say, okay, well, listen, you know what? After 10 days, I still feel a little hungry. Let me double up some of these things, okay, right? And so that is that. Now, Anna and I um, are putting together a Transformation experience just for you guys, okay, right? So so usually we we have one that had already started, started November 15th and goes to February 15th, and then our next one is gonna start on April 1st, and that will go three months. But for those of you that kind of do this with us, okay, right, that will start, we wanna start like on Monday, 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 okay? Monday, and go 90 days, we'll have special prizes for all of those that started with us for this thing, okay, right? And Anna did something really awesome. She put together this book. Of course she did. Yeah, of course she did. She's Except it's really like, hey, I did this thing. I'm gonna send it to you. Tell me what you think. You know, I was thinking it's like a sheet, you know, and, and that little pamphlet or whatever. And then I'm like, oh, this thing is like kind of heavy. And I open it up and I'm like, wow, this is the real deal. So I'm like, we actually need this at the company, you know, right? right? 
And so it's really cool. I mean, place for before and after pictures and little journals. There's an accountability tracker. I mean, one of the things that you know we talk about is that you need to win every day, okay? Right? And every day is a challenge. And so being able to kind of you know mark down every day that hey, listen, I took my healthy body pack. I I did a healthy breakfast, I did a healthy lunch, I moved around, I did some exercise, I drank some water. I mean, and it's okay if some of these check marks don't get filled out every day, right? I mean, you do what you can, when you can, the best you can, right? But having this kind of accountability tracker really allows you to feel like, hey, listen, you can do this, and as you start filling all these things out, like, you don't want to miss a check mark, right? And so, so it has all of that, and then um, the major thing that I really like about this is that at the very end of the day, you are going to have ideas and feedback and tips and experiences that is gonna be a huge help to someone else. And for you to be able to kind of journal that, I think is one of the biggest parts of this for me because as you know, longevity isn't just about making a huge transformation in your life, but it's making a transformation in other people's lives. And so you sharing that experience and having this, I think, would be huge. So of course this is in carriage makers, right? That's, you know. So if you guys are interested in this, it is gonna end up in the template gallery at Heritage Makers at some point. I'm not sure if it's there. Cynthia's not in here to ask, but you know, just you guys know how to get a hold of me. Shoot me an email and I will make sure that you have the template to download. You can buy it just like this blank. So for those of you that aren't into doing stuff with your photos, you can buy it and print it blank, and then you can cut things out, stick it in as you go along. You can write with a sharpie in it, whatever you want. For those of you that do want to give it a try online, you can actually stick your own pictures in. You can type in online, and then you can print it when it's finished. So either way, both ways will work. Thanks. Okay, awesome. And so here, we're going to do the raffle for the 